Rachel from Recovery by Rachel, as you can see on the little screen there. And um, I have had the honor of facilitating about 3,500 people in addiction recovery um, over the last eight years. I used to have a spiritual wellness center in Southern California, a physical studio where I had people come during the detox phase of recovery to the studio and I would teach what I would call a spiritual fitness class. And what that included was um, so 12 people at a time, we would sit in a semicircle, just like how I'm set up now, and we would, we would do a check-in, I would do a check-in with everybody, with your higher power. Then I would share um, essential oils, which I have here today, if you have any in your environment, I encourage you to, to grab them, because those are, we'll be talking about those a little bit. And then um, I would take everybody through, um, do a little share, and then take everybody through a guided meditation, like a healing meditation. I would do hands-on healing. Uh, I play these beautiful crystal bowls. I'll let the, I'll I'll ding them for you now, so you can hear in case you're not um, familiar with them. So these are frosted quartz crystal. There's a tiny one. They're frosted quartz crystal. So if I play them like this make an amazing sound. When you're meditating, you can't really detect where the sound, because your eyes are closed, you can't tell where the sound is coming from. It just sort of envelops you and, and bathes you in this like frequency. And the idea of sound healing is, well, if you, if you took a, you know, if you took a cup of water and placed it on a speaker, this is a drum, of course, you place what, what would happen to the water on the inside, right? You get these concentric circles, right? And um, we're 70 to 80% water, our bodies. So sound healing helps move any energy, negative energies out of our system and it creates um, resonance, gets us back to our natural coherence because we're out of alignment. Stress takes us out of alignment, right? Uh, addiction takes us out of alignment, which is stress, like all of these things. So the journey of the recovery of self is bringing yourself back into coherence of your natural state. So I like to share natural substances for us to do this, to facilitate this, and also to teach you, show you, educate, and share what other options you have to choose from on your recovery journey, right? Because we can only choose from the options we have. So now we get to choose from different natural substances that are really, really powerful in healing and opening those portals to something greater than yourself, right? A God of a higher power of your understanding or a God of your understanding or whatever works for you. Um, so then do we do a guided meditation and then we integrate after. So a lot of people would have an experience during the guided meditation, amazing, beautiful, wonderful healing experiences, transcendental experiences, visits from you know, dearly departed loved ones, for example. And, and if you're comfortable, we do a little share. And then I'm highly intuitive and empathic. So as I tune into each and every, each and every one of you um, with a lot of reverence and respect for your privacy, we kind of address, you know, I can see your blind spots. Like we all have these blind spots, right? I can't see my hands right now. So I help you in seeing what's in your highest and best interest today in this moment that you can't see for yourself, right? So my role as a facilitator is to facilitate you further down your path of recovery and healing. So it's I deal with the unseen part of addiction recovery, right? This is all the unseen. So it's really hard to explain because it's very experiential. Your nervous system has been through trauma, right? On all different levels and you're healing and it takes a while. It takes a while, right? So all of these as I said earlier, all of these natural substances help calm the nervous system, help bring the system back into coherence so that you start to feel better. And why do you feel better? Because your energy, your vibration, we all vibrate at a frequency, your vibration shifts, right? We've all been in a room where we walk into a room where like, don't like the vibe in here. It doesn't feel good. Or you wake up one day, like, I don't feel good. Or you're hungover, you don't, because your vibration has dropped. So it's all about elevating our vibration, our frequency, because everything is energy. Energy can't be created or destroyed, right? Everything in the universe is energy and us included. Does that make sense? 
give me a, I don't know, give me a hand or like a thanks, Lisa Maria, you're nodding. <laughs> Damien, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Um, so I would love to take all of you through a virtual experience of this spiritual fitness class, if that sounds cool. And um, yeah, hopefully you will feel comfortable enough to share and um, and we'll take it from there. So what I'd like to do, first of all, is whoever would feel like um, sharing about, uh, oh, maybe I should back up. The other thing I'm going to tell you is, um, so being a professional intuitive, it means my spidey senses are off the charts and I'm an empath, which means I feel in my body where you have pain or blocks in your system, in your body. And pri primarily that would be your energy body because we have okay we have we have five bodies right we have a physical body we have an emotional body we have a mental body we have a pain body and we have a spiritual body according to the yogic traditions so what i do is tune in and read your energy body your spiritual body your emotional body and then the other thing that i'm gifted at doing is reading the unconscious mind and where our blocks are because we all have these insane amount of self-limiting beliefs that block us from progressing along our path. And today is actually a perfect time for us to do this class because we're in we're in a full moon, right? The full moon's tonight in uh, where I am, which is California. And full moon energies exist two days before and two days after. And why it's important for us to pay attention to nature. Well, first of all, nature was the first religion. We all know nature can be so healing, right? And the second thing is we're very affected by planetary shifts. Whether you believe it or not, we just are, right? So let's just assume we are, just because it makes our life easier and, and it can help us. We can use it as a tool. So the moon is feminine energetically and the sun is masculine. And the moon, she's feminine when she's full, what does she look like? What does she do? She's a spotlight, right? You can go outside on a full moon. You can see a lot more clearly. So energetically, oh, I love that you love the moon, Lisa Marie. So energetically, it's um, she illuminates. She illuminates for us what we don't see for ourselves. So I was sharing this with Damien earlier because I said to him, how, how's, how are your meetings going? How is, how's the past few days? And he's like, oh, it's been a little crazy. I said, well, that makes sense because we're in the full moon. And if you talk to anybody who works in an ER, they'll tell you the same thing. <laughs> the ERs get really busy on the full moon, right? Um, so it's important to know, I share that with you so that we know if you're feeling sensitive this weekend or tonight, or today, whatever your time zone you're in, or tomorrow, if it's tomorrow for you, um, that would would be why everything gets kind of amplified by the moon. So be gentle with yourself. And, you know, I have an app on my phone where I can, I can see the moon clearly from my house where I live, but I also have an app so I can check the moon cycles. And then conversely, the new moon is a great time to start something new. So if you're starting a new project, or, you know, you want to eat drink more water or you want to start a, a new job or a new idea or you want to do something different you want to start yoga or start meditating new moon energies are very nurturing because she's feminine again right so nurturing is a feminine quality so the moon will support you in that so does anyone have any questions so far does that all make sense Thank you, Ashley. Great. So I encourage you, does everybody have a, does everybody have a healthy drink next to them? <laughs> I encourage you, we'll take a sip, we'll take a little water break. I'm drinking lavender tea. I love lavender because it's super relaxing and I have lavender essential oils here today with me. And I actually woke up with a cracker of a headache today because I'm under a little bit of stress. And um, I used lavender in my shower, just a few drops and peppermint oil on my temples, my headache completely lifted. So I'm a huge um, proponent of essential oils for natural alternatives. Alternatives. You love lavender, everything. Um, keeping it real, I actually have a monster. Do you wanna, do you wanna elaborate on that a little bit? I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> you can unmute yourself if you want. Oh, monster drink, I see. Yeah. Maybe my switch for water. <laughs> um, okay. So um, I would love to start this off or, or continue going around and asking um, who feels like sharing. So if we were in a physical class and we were all together, I would ask you, 
you know, kind of go around the room and check in with everybody and ask you how you're doing with your higher power. Like what, what form does your higher power take for you and how you feel about your relationship with your higher power today? So who would like to share? If nobody wants to start, I'll, I'll, oh, Ashley, thank you, Ashley. Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, super awesome. Thank you. Um, How are I, you? I'm really surprisingly, this is really weird that I'm even here. Um, I have the Pocket Rehab app and like I check it maybe once every six months or something and it popped up today your link, like literally like two seconds ago, I just had dinner. My, da my daughter's still awake and I just hopped on zoom. Like I'm in Texas. So that's central time. Anyway, long story short is I'm not expecting, I wasn't expecting to be here. I am like completely, um, it's exactly where I need to be and hot mess express. Um, I'm very, <laughs> I'm very like disconnected and I'm struggling right now. And I just feel like there's something crazy that, you know, of like the higher power definitely brought me here. Mm, yeah. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's, I don't know. I, will you re-ask your question? <laughs> well, thank you for, yeah. Thank you for sharing all of that. So, um, and I'm glad you're here. So do you, thank you. you, you said yes. your higher power. So assuming you have one and what form does that take for you? Um, I, I do believe in God, um, but also spirit. I've been really in reading and researching a lot about, um, you know, being able to connect with, with that realm. And I feel like I have this small sort of sensitivity to it. Um, I don't really know how to explain it, but yeah, I feel like people are trying it. Like, I feel like I have like all these signs sometimes and, um, just trying to connect with me. Cause I, I again, I'm struggling, but, um, I don't know else. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm nervous. <laughs> no, it's fine. You're doing great. So I, I would love to share with you, um, that I feel lots of angel energy around okay. you. And I just want to say for anybody on the call, if this sounds totally woo for you, it's okay. Let's honor and respect that we all have different perspectives of spirituality and religion and what that means. So if we can all hold space for everything without judgment, because it's such an individual journey, I would just like to say that to everybody. So, um, so Ashley, yeah, I feel, I feel a lot of, um, angel energy around you. Um, and I feel your neck is really tight. Is your neck tight right now? Yeah, it is absolutely so tight. Like my whole body is, but my neck, especially right now, it's been, yeah. So your neck is tight because you don't want to look talking about the blind spots, right? You don't want to look mm -hmm. at all the the, like the angelic realm is summoning you and calling you and, um, your daughter has been trying to bring it to your attention somehow it looks like, but really? there's, a, there's fear in you that's resisting it. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I, I don't know about my daughter. Like I have to think about that, but, um, yeah, no, it does. Absolutely. Go ahead. So that's the, um, I feel like that's the, like, oh some struggle, like the sum of that struggle that you can't, you're like, what is it? I can't the find fear. it. It's that. Yeah. Does that make yeah. Sense? yeah. And the, and the angelic definitely, definitely makes sense. I, I did, sorry. I don't know if I'm going off, but real quick, I did connect with one medium over the online one time and the first time and only time, but she, she it was my it was my grandmother and like it was had to, it had to have been real anyway and for you to have said that and she was such a bright light when I spoke with her or whenever I was meeting with that woman that um I don't know I just always feel like it's my nanny <laughs> so anyway you feel like it's your what I always feel like it's it, it is my angel or it's my my people my um my nanny I call her my nanny my grandmother who had um, came in through that reading but it's yeah. like that woman said you know it's very there's such a strong white light so when you say angelic energy that's I don't know it kind of relates yeah I see you um something that might help you to re to equip reacquaint I say reacquaint right because we used to be all connected to this and the veil we're in we're behind the veil right so um right. You, you get some angel cards and just play with them and just have them around and just kind of get used to that idea that way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But thanks for sharing. And um, no, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Ashley. Okay. Uh, Michael BMF. Hi, Rachel. 
Um, yeah, I'm Catholic, so I believe in God. God's my higher power, um, and he's always around me constant. And it was a couple of years ago where I got the chakra bracelets because I was very, couldn't sleep a lot. Mm-hmm. And I started to look into about the chakras and the whole chakra thing. And I wear these every day. And now I sleep a lot better at ease. Obviously, there's times where it's all off balance. So I go into a chakra meditation and that just brings me back down again and that. But yeah, I believe in all the crystals and all that. Yeah. Um, but the, the chakra bracelet has helped me for a long time now. So um, yeah. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I, I um, it's beautiful that you can that you're open being Catholic. You're so you're open to other um, modal spirituality, kind of more you know spiritual, what we call spiritual versus um the religious beliefs. That's great to keep to keep yourself open. Um, and uh, yeah, I work with the chakras a lot, reading people's chakras. Um, and we for you, I sense Michael when you when you do those chakra meditations so what happens is because we've had trauma in our childhood we leave our bodies right so part of the recovery journey is coming back into our bodies that's why it's so painful that's why it's so painful sometimes right it's like it hurts to be when i came back into my body i had a lot of sexual trauma as a kid when i came back into my body only 10 years ago it was so painful I, i'm very sensitive energetically right so my, i could feel ever all the all the energy that was like crimped and cramped in my body my energy body was screaming i felt all of it it was very 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 painful yeah. um, so for you i feel like when you do that chakra meditation it brings you back down into your root because i see your system you tend to leave your body and start to yeah. go out and you, you're it's like you're half in half out of your body so yeah. your chakra being the grounding one is is going to be a touchstone for you i feel so um red right the color red you've got red do red on your hair yeah. and yeah right <laughs> yeah so so uh any of the crystals that have to do with the root chakra um drumming you know is really grounding um lying on the earth right are you in england or are you in the u.s you have england. england yeah. yeah yeah i know it's a little chilly right now right i'm english actually so um uh yeah so lying going outside you know hugging a tree lying on the ground when when the snow thaws um, all of that's really, really grounding, walking barefoot outside. Um, I feel like you're very connected to the earth and I feel like you would really benefit from making a conscious effort to connect to nature every day. Does that resonate? Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. 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 So this is great. Cause you've got spirit, which is the crown chakra, right? Cause you totally mm-hmm. have, I can yeah. see your chakras open and you're like, it's so good. It's so awesome. But the and the and the root chakra being in the in the now and your root chakra is about safety, security, yeah. sense of support and belonging, family issues. I sense some stuff maybe around your mom, you know, a little bit maybe healing that needs to be done there. Um, does that resonate? Yep, yep. Because my mom dealt with me in my alcoholism, so she seen me in the states and stuff like that. So yeah. Oh, you're doing it. You're like, yeah, you look, you look good. You feel good. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Chat. Sorry, I think you're next. Oh no, is it JC? Sorry. JC, should we do next? I think you're next. I think JC was next. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Whoever said that, thank you. <laughs> hiya. JC, okay. Is it hiya? <laughs> it's JC. In bed, I feel I feel a bit crappy, and it's like half two in the morning. But I really wanted to um come to the oh, meet you. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, lovely. Where are you in the UK? Um, East Anglia. So we're like an hour and ten minutes out of London to the east. Okay. Okay. So how are you doing with your higher power? Um, my higher power is is has always been God. I was brought up as a um Christian, not. I wouldn't say my family are overly religious though at all um but our school was very religious and we were always kind of taught that um god was quite a punishing person to be sort of feared so i've had to really change my concept of him into much more of a loving god 
um I'm very open-minded um I've started getting crystals and stuff to be more spiritual and I meditate I do try and meditate on God's word rather than anything else um I wouldn't do tarot cards because I believe that's um do they call it divination divination or divination or something it's when you try and predict the future and that's meant to be satanic so I, I wouldn't ever do anything like that but I totally believe in angels and sort of the protection from them and um I think I you know higher power is really sort of personal to everyone isn't it but yeah. um to me God is in the sky the stars the moon he's within me he's when I'm outside is when I feel his presence the most and just like a bird beside me singing that shouldn't be that close to me I feel his presence just in nature hugely it's um yeah I I struggle indoors but when I'm outside I I just feel the presence straight away I I feel like yeah sort of a universal sort of presence Mm, that's beautiful lovely thanks for sharing all of that i i sense that your system there's a lot like a little bit of um confusion that you're you're obviously working through which you stated right like the being raised catholic and you're you're sorting it out and i feel like your system's still a little bit like okay you're still sorting it out which is to be expected to Re- recover from some of those um, negative dog the shadow side of the patriarchal religions is complicated it's complex there's so much wiring in the brain that happens with these l- beliefs right like our brains are sponges up until age seven if that doesn't resonate with you as an adult and you want to undo all of that it's like going in and picking and choosing what you want to keep and what you don't so what i like to offer to people to sort of keep it simple which it seems like you and michael are doing this is you don't have to throw out the baby with the bathwater, right? If you want to keep Jesus and his teachings, for example, that you loved, you can keep that and you can leave the rest, right? So you get, I believe in 31 flavors of spirituality, I call it. So we get to create your own, right? You can get like, whatever you believe from God or church or the Bible, the bits and pieces. And then, you know, what your aunt told you yesterday, what, a neighbor told you last week and what your fortune cookie said in your in your takeaway tonight right so you know what i mean like we can we can we can create our own um religion in a way because um you know the patriarchal religions can be complicated to try and navigate and take all the way through with you when you're on a spiritual journey, because you'll always butt up a lot of contradiction. And that's when you get a little bit entangled and you're like, okay, this doesn't really make sense, you know, and to try and figure out or make sense. So I feel like I want to, I feel like going, like, I like to go into the root of things and energetically kind of like pull it out and I can see this big weed and there's like all these roots and, and it's mm-hmm. like, I see dogma on the written on the leaves of the, of the weed. Right. So it's just like, just, take the dogma, you can say, thank you, but I don't need you anymore. And you get to pick and choose from this buffet of your religion that you're brought up with, like what you want to keep, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, my, my parents weren't Catholic, but I mean, they're not Catholic, they're just, they're Christian, but I, I wasn't really brought up in a religious household, but the, I, I went to boarding school and the school was was more, Right. you know we we had to go to chapel on Saturday and we were we were sort of told to fear God kind of thing you know but yes. my my parents weren't ever like that at all my dad goes to church occasionally and that's about it but they they didn't put any sort of dogma beliefs in me it was very much school mm-hmm. other adults that did that mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, sense that. I sense there's a troubling piece for you in it what what now that we've talked a little bit what's the I feel like there's like a little hot spot for you right now that you're kind of dealing with. What is it? What does it feel like to you, JC? I don't know. Um, probably a bit of resentment at being sent to boarding school at the age of seven. Okay. Um, That's that fair. Yeah. But then saying that, you know, like a year later, or six months later, I loved it. But the first six months, you know, at the age of seven, it, 
um, back then it was kind of well even now people do send their kids to boarding school it's just you know, thing, right? <laughs> you know it's yes. a very British thing isn't it very you know the yeah. kids off boarding school and all that but um but yeah I, I did I did love it after that but it was um it was it was like a military style school it was very very hard going but I did enjoy it once I was settled in so I would invite you to explore this window of resentment that were, let's just say for practical terms, you said it existed for like, like for the first six months, right? To go yeah. underneath, to go underneath the resentment, like sit with the resentment and to, and to go into it because there's others, there's, I can feel it in my heart. There's some other emotion in there for you to just feel just let it come through and to just feel. And when you feel those negative, negative, I say that loosely, emotions around some of that resentment, your your system will, will release the energy and it creates more space energetically. And then you can start to do forgiveness work towards the people that put you in this, right? So it's baby steps in into healing this piece for you. It feels like there's just a six month window. Does that make sense? Yeah, how do you let that go then? Like, how do you well, start the healing process? First, you have to feel it. You have to just connect. Like, do, you have, do you have a picture of yourself when you were seven? Okay. Do you have a photo of yourself when you were seven? Um, no, my parents do. And they're moving house at the moment. So all the pictures are coming out. But um, Okay, it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> So either either get someone to you know to text you a photo of you when you were seven. It, it doesn't have to be real. It could be digital and spend time with her and talk to her. You're like, oh my gosh, you're so sweet and adorable. And uh, how are you? And I'm I'm so sorry that that was so difficult for you. I feel you. And then and then she starts to return to you because right now she's a little bit out here. So she starts to return to you. You integrate the inner child, which on a deeper level, which. We all need to do the inner child is so important because they can hold, hold our sense of wonderment and awe and we need that in our innocence right like we all need that because we get jaded and life is complicated right now so important that we have that um because you know when we're in a park and we see a little puppy and we want to run up to the puppy and be like oh my god can i touch your puppy that's the little boy and the little girl inside us right and who wants to not to be connected to that because we all know that feeling right you just want to go squishy squishy it feels good right so it's important that's why it's important to um integrate more your little girl but the best way to do that sometimes it's a bit of a stretch so i always suggest to people you get a photo and you can journal you can do like stream of consciousness writing while the photo's there and ask her to talk to me you know um i i do guided meditation work with this a lot of facilitation um so you know you can go to my website and sign up for um get on my email list and i can share that way i'm going to do a guided meditation tonight not for inner child work but um it is it is really really important work to do and it's some of the hardest work to do to be honest um because we all have these places inside us from our past where we're not we have we you know we need to bring that into us and and heal it and feel it so you need to do that first get the photo connect with her write with her and then what happens is when we connect we set an intention to connect with our inner child and we bring them like just by setting an intention to connect with them they start to come out of hiding they'll start to trust us so you're you're reestablishing a connection and a relationship and think of it as just like another seven-year-old who wanders through your front door of your house, really. It's this, it's no different, right? Like, how are you? How was your day? You're so cute. Do you see what I mean? It's yeah. it's easier if it's easier if we do this work as though it's a third person. And then all of a sudden it just integrates and you'll just feel it in your body. That part of you will come back home. You know, and I and I I practice um, shamanism a lot, right? I have a lot of shamanic training and that's a lot of what I do is in the shamanic realm. And we call this, um, you know, in, in traditional therapy, it's called dissociation, right? When we get separated from ourselves. Mm -hmm. And in my world, in my world, it's called um, soul fragmentation. So you're actually bringing like a piece of your soul, which is your little girl back home. And we all, we all have dissociation and soul fragmentation on some level. We all do, it just happens being human so does that help 
Yes, it's it's crazy because I I always thought I had such a good childhood. I didn't have any sort of abuse or trauma or anything. So I I have such good childhood memories. It's weird that that even is that it's, you've brought that to my attention. You know, it's just um, it's a tender age, right? Seven, like that's yeah. and that could be the thing is that could have been a traumatic thing for you, but maybe not for me. If I went to boarding school at age seven, I didn't go till I was thirteen. But you know, it's young. Seven is young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good to, you brought some more awareness that I wasn't aware of, so thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. My pleasure. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, um, Chuck, I think you're next. I'm just reading the comments here. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Sorry, I had the camera flip the other way. Thank you for being here, Rachel. No oh, thank you, Chuck. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, would you like to share about your higher power? Yeah, so I have faith that I'm not sure exactly what it is. Um, like you were talking about energy and whatnot. I definitely know that there's a universal energy. And, and what that means to me is I'm able to like surrender control, really. Control is the big thing for me. And I'm able to surrender control and and turn that over. And And because I've had results of things being handled for me and being able to manifest things into my life and whatnot I, my faith has increased in the fact that there, there's definitely something so that's helped me through some tough times um but what's currently going on is i'm really super engrossed with time and energy and and all of it into a new business venture mm -hmm. and um where i'm able to access the strongest connection for me with my higher powers in nature and I'm, I'm very quickly able to do that where I live and be like completely engrossed in nature. But in the, the last week, I've had to force myself to, you know, to take some time to walk the dog around the block. That's <laughs> not really getting into the nature that I like to get into. And um, also like right before this meeting, I ran to the gym and and went into the steam room and normally I go in and, and, you know, meditate and do my thing. But my brain is just firing on what I need to do. Um, I'm stuck in, in um, anxiety of the future. I haven't been doing too much looking back right now. I'm just really anxious about what's coming up and what I need to have done that mm -hmm. I'm not able to slow down enough to receive the guidance and the comfort that I'm normally able to. Right, right. So, um, so you, I feel, I hear what you're saying, and it feels like what you're saying in so many words is that, with regards to your business, I'm sensing there's a bit of a disconnect for you with your higher power in regards to how that blends together. Is that am I am I assessing that correctly? Yeah, the, there's yeah. not much blending. So, right. I feel it's more it's more recently because I have like deadlines coming up and things that need to be done. So there's no scheduling my natural time or my, you know, my, my time to be able to go meditate and, and do whatever it is. It just doesn't exist. So even though, so I'll force myself to go be in those places, but I'm not there. It's not successful. And it's, it's more of a forced action as opposed to a surrender and receiving of what I'm supposed to be receiving. I hear you. So my next question would be, what time of day do you usually do these practices? Whenever I can, actually. And it's dependent on the weather some days. So this afternoon was gorgeous and I was out a little bit, but okay. even as I've been overlooking, you know, amazing, beautiful mountain sides and whatnot, where I can usually at least do a gratitude check and at least be, oh my goodness, look at that. Like, what am I worried about? That's always gonna, you know, all that stuff. I would mm -hmm. stare at the mountain They'll be thinking, I got to go set up a credit card payment. I got to go get my Zoom stuff ready. Like there was no, I didn't see anything. So I, I know what, obviously it, it sounds like what it is. Um, I, I guess I'm just thinking that empathically, like you're talking about, um, is there anything that I feel like maybe I'm missing something? Yeah. So it, it, what I hear for you is that is there's an invitation, there's a question. Can you do your meditation in the mornings at home 
before you do any, before you touch any work. Like that's what I do. You know, I'm a spiritual entrepreneur, right? Like I have a business recovery by Rachel this is what I do. And I work exorbitant number of hours so I can serve and, and, and all of you and work with everybody. And, um, but it's a non-negotiable for me every single morning. I sit down, I have my practices. It doesn't matter how much sleep I've had or how much sleep I haven't. I get up at seven every day and, and it's just, it becomes, it's, it becomes, it's just, you anchor, you just anchor and make this commitment and agreement to yourself. It is a non-negotiable. And we all know the hardest thing with anything is showing up, right? Right. Right. Absolutely. So I'm glad that you, that you put it that way also. So I'm in the same industry and my morning meditation practice is the same. So it's where I go when I just need to realign, readjust, refocus, whatever. So there's a morning one as well. And I'm glad that you said non-negotiable because what's happening is I know it's non-negotiable and I still I insert myself in the place or the time that I need to do it. I'm just not doing it. It's not, I'm not able to connect like I was because I can't stop from um, future tripping basically. Yeah. Okay. So does your heart rate, do you get anxiety? Like does your heart start to beat quickly? Is it like that? Or is it yes. more on your mind? It's, it's physiological as well. It's both. So it depends on, you know, in the morning, if I'm up right at it and I'm up at four thirty-five, and at that point I'm pretty centered and pretty calm. And that meditation is more of like a Zen meditation. And I'm just listening. But if I once I get rolling and I've had some caffeine and I go to the gym, then I come back and I try to focus. If I try to pull myself out of it at that point, there's just too much stimulus. I think that I'm just overloaded. I feel like there's two things going on. Check your mind is is do 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 to business, right? Like your mind's pulling you this way, and I feel like the anxiety, the heart, the shallow. Like I know I get it. I feel it. Right. It, mm -hmm. that, that is something else. And if we sit with anxiety long enough in this space and meditation with your higher power, and you just, you can do some breath work to try and excavate it. It's your, it's because it's our heart. It's your heart chakra. It's your heart center. There's something in your system that's your body's trying to give you a message, right? Mm -hmm. So the anxiety is a, Ding -a -ling -a -ling. It's like a little Tinkerbell. It doesn't feel like it, but to me, it feels like they're separate. So this, the anxiety is, is pulling you in this direction and your brain is pulling you in that direction. Does that make sense? So they're sure. not connected, yeah. but they're, you're experiencing them at the same time. So it's like, oh my God, overwhelmed. But if you can, I can feel the tightness in my chest and my heart. If you can, if you can go into this anxiety and ask it, what are you trying to tell me? what is going on and sometimes in meditation it sounds like you have a good practice you just if you sit long enough check it will arise it will reveal itself if you give it the space that's why silent meditation retreats are so popular if you mm -hmm. sit long enough in silence it all comes up right which is why we're so busy doing this because we don't want it to come up because we want to keep busy right does that help absolutely absolutely thank you very much yeah, much appreciated welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Anna, or is it Anna? Unicorn of, <laughs> I love your handle. Uh, it's Anna. <laughs> Hi, Anna. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm well, thanks. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Um, so my higher power is God. I was raised Christian, um, but like I kind of veered in my early 20s like to try and find my higher power to see if that was actually my higher power and um when I started recovery that was like the first thing that my I feel like my spirit called to was God because mm -hmm. for me God is like all around me and everywhere and I like give everything to him so that I don't have to like have any stress or worries or like anxiety and I can actually I've actually been living in peace and I haven't had any negativity other than my job but you know I've given that to him and I've got a job opportunity 
coming my way for a better work environment in my career path. So I'm like really happy about that. So yeah. Great. Thanks. Lovely. Congratulations. Thanks. So you feel good about your connection? You feel like it's strong and Yeah. It's um I love what you were sharing about giving things to your higher power because I think that's something a lot of people forget, right? Like Chuck was sharing, you know, we feel stress or anxiety, we can, or our mind's too busy, we can ask our higher power to take that from us or worries, um, you know, and then of course, if things don't go away, like in Chuck's situation, sharing that kind of heart palpitation-ish kind of feelings, you know, that's your that's your system trying to tell you something. But we think these things, I love all the animals, by the way, everybody, it's awesome. Um, I love animals. Um, I, you know, we tend to like, oh, something's wrong. Oh, something's wrong. I need, you know, I have anxiety. I need to take something or I have this, 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 this. If we sit, we're so distracted these days, but I promise you, if you sit, just ask your body and ask your system, like, what are you trying to tell me? Our bodies are so intelligent, right? And our energy bodies, as I was explaining earlier, a lot of people don't even know. They think, oh, I was reading a, I was reading a stat the other day. 75% of medical conditions are undiagnosable. And my theory is, I'm like, well, of course, it's the energy body. You know, like uh, my, right, my right hip hurts. I'm like, okay, well, do you have fear of moving forward? Do you have fear of stepping into your masculine potential? Right? The energy body will hold and, and we stuff energies, we hide things from ourselves. It's amazing what our systems do. And it's taken me years to, to learn it and to track it. It's like learning another language. But um, thank you for sharing that, Anna. That's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Does anybody else have any else you want to share about the higher power before we get into meditation? I'd love to share some sound healing and a guided meditation with all of you. No? Okay. So everyone's on mute, which is good. So um, as I said earlier, I'll just take you through what I would do if we were in person. I would have you open your um, left hand because energetically the left side of the body is feminine. So the left side is the receiving side. So I would have you, um, I have a lavender oil here today. So I would have you open your palm and I would place one or two drops of lavender oil in your palm. I'm running low on this, I need to get some, okay. And then I would have you rub your palms together like this, make a cup with your hands. You can see there's oil on my hands. And then slowly bring your hands to your face and create a mask. <laughs> Unfortunately, we all know what that is these days, don't we? Um, create a mask and then just do some really deep inhalations. In through your nose, out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. I have you do that three or four times. And if you had any extra oils, I would invite you to rub it on your neck or on your pulse points, on your wrists or on your, on your elbows if you had short sleeves. So the beautiful thing about essential oils is that they cross the blood-brain barrier. And it's interesting, there are even um, in studies they've done on treating brain cancer, for example, there are uh, treatments for brain cancer that don't cross the blood brain barrier. So essential oils are just a, of a different um, chemical makeup, right? So it's interesting how nature's substances can do that and some of the pharmaceuticals can't. So um, oils are super, super, super powerful. Okay, so I'll put those aside. So today I'd love to take everybody through um, us to unmute Ashley. Oh, I think Damien is... Um, Working with his son, I don't. I, don't, I think he's got control. I don't think I can do that. Um, uh, okay, so I'd love to take you through a um, guided meditation to um, connect you to a part of yourself that's going to give you some really beautiful insight. And I won't tell you what that is because I want you to have an organic experience. So um, I invite everybody to get comfortable where you are. If you can sit cross-legged how I am, I'm sitting on a meditation cushion. Having your back, your your spine long and straight is ideal. I know some of you are sitting on sofas. Um, JC, for example, you're in bed, so you can lie down. Um, as long as your spine is straight, lie on your back with your palms facing up. Again, energetically, this is the receiving position, so just an intention. So you can sit cross-legged like this with your palms up. You can sit with your legs straight, or you can lie down on your back. And just make sure your head is straight, they're not, you know, kind of contorted. We just want the spine and the head to be straight to allow the energy body 
to align. So, all right. So uh, I invite you to close your eyes down and maybe tuck your shoulder blades back, squeeze your shoulders up to your ears and let them drop down. And then just become aware of your own breath. And uh, just feel your chest rise as you take an inhale. And feel your chest fall as you let it go. And then I'm going to guide you to some deeper cleansing breaths. So I'm going to ask you to inhale to a count of four and exhale to a count of four. So ready to prepare. Inhaling through your nose, two, three, four. Exhaling through your mouth, three, two, one. Inhaling through your nose, two, three, four. Exhaling through your mouth, three, two, one. Inhaling through your nose, two, three, Four, hold it. Exhaling through your mouth. Three, two, one. Beautiful. Now just let the breath find its own rhythm. Don't change it. Just let it be what it is. Just remember to breathe, okay? So as you get more comfortable, allow yourself to relax and let go. As you sink deeper down into quiet and ease, I want you to imagine that you have a grounding cord dropping from the base of your spine down into the center of the earth. is going very deep into the earth and I want you to imagine that there's something in the earth that you can anchor the cord to so that no matter where you go on your inner journey you feel solidly connected to the earth deeper into a state of relaxation. Perhaps you can remember a time when you stood before a pond or a lake and it was quiet and peaceful. You may have dropped a pebble into the water and noticed the waves rippling out. one wave after another, flowing outward farther and farther. The waves slowing down and becoming further apart until the water was once again calm and peaceful. I invite you now to imagine that your body is like that body of water. Drop a breath like the stone into the pool that is your body. And as you drop a breath into the center of your body, you can feel the waves of relaxation rippling out. of relaxation flowing through your body, up through your torso, into your chest and your back, up through the vertebrae and spreading out into each and every muscle of your back, through your shoulders and arms, up through your neck, 
your jaw, your face, your scalp. Feel those waves relax as your muscles let go and become soft and loose. Now feel the ripples of relaxation flowing down the bottom of your torso, flowing through your abdomen and your pelvis, down through your thighs, calves, ankles, feet, and toes. Know that each time you draw a breath into the center of your body, you're becoming more relaxed. As you become more relaxed, you find yourself becoming quieter and more peaceful. Bring your attention to the point between your eyes, gently gazing upward and inward. Imagine a light there. Now imagine that light becoming a beam that extends out into space. Follow that beam as it leaves this building, as it travels above this town, as it continues out so that you can make out the entire countryside, and then the state, province, or country. Keep going further and further out into space and notice the curvature of the earth. As you keep going out further and further, find yourself enveloped by the softness and the quiet of space. Notice below you the big blue green ball with white clouds whisking around it. Allow yourself to enjoy this perspective for a moment. Now notice another beam of light very near to you, a different beam from the one that you followed into outer space. Begin to follow that beam back down to earth. The beam is taking you back to earth one year from now into the future. Keep following this beam down, noticing the curvature of the earth and the geography stretched out below you. As you come closer to the end of the beam, keep noticing where you are. This is where your future self lives, you, one year from now. Come into contact with the earth and notice where you are. Notice what dwelling or nature surrounds you. Now move to the dwelling of your future self. What does it look like? What kind of landscape does it have? Are there trees, flowers? Get a sense of this place. Approach the door of your future self. Know that on the other side of this door waiting to greet you is you, yourself, one year from now. As the door opens, what do you notice? Greet your future self and notice the way your future self returns your greeting. Welcoming you in this time and place one year into the future. Take in this person 
the future you. What does he or she look like? Notice how he or she stands. What is he or she wearing? Get a sense of him or her and their essence. Notice the inside of this dwelling. What kind of person lives here? What are the colors and the senses of this place? Now move with your future self to a comfortable place for a conversation. Perhaps your future self offers you something to drink. Really settle in and make yourself comfortable for a conversation with you. Begin by asking this question. What is it, future self, that you most remember about the last year? Now take a moment and ask your future self your own question. What other question is out there that you would like to ask them? Know that you can return to this place anytime you choose. But for now, we're going to bring this visit with your future self to a close. Thank him or her for being here with you today and for sharing their wisdom. Now find your way back to the beam of light and journey back up the beam. Watch this world one year in the future growing smaller and smaller as you move out into space. See again the ball of blue and green below you. Notice the clouds swirling around it. Notice that your beam of light is intersected with a different beam of light that will take you back to the here and now. Follow this beam of light back to present time Earth. As you travel down this beam, notice the Earth growing bigger and bigger. Notice the geography of where you are. Moving further down the beam, notice the countryside, the horizon of your town and finally back into the room where you are in this present moment. In a few moments, I'm going to count from three to one. And at the count of one, you will feel refreshed and alert as you have had the perfect amount of rest, aware that you can remember everything you wish from this inner journey. Three, coming back into present time. Two, stretching your body and feeling the ground beneath you. And one, remembering to remain silent with yourself. Open your eyes, fluttering your eyes open, wiggling your fingers and toes. You feel refreshed and alert.
Welcome back, everybody. Ah. So who would like to share? If you want to raise your hand, I'd love to hear about your experience, how that was for you. Michael, BMF. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that was mad. Yeah, that was really mad. Um, every time you hit the crystal balls, I could feel the energy like a ripple effect straight through every one you did. Wow. I could just feel the ripple effect of it, like my energy rippling, like a ripple effect. And um, when you was on about meeting you, you were uh, you the other person. You a year later, like my hands were like kind of numb, where I couldn't feel my hands. But in in there, it was like I was, I was having an out of body experience where everything I was saying and everything when I shook his hands, I, I could literally feel it. But it, it's weird. And um, the question that I asked was, how am I going to be a year later? And it, it was just like, the person was right in my face and he just said, look, everything's going to be fine, man. Mm. Just keep on doing what you're doing and don't worry about anything else. Just, mm. just concentrate on what you're doing and hearing the words, everything will be okay. It's making me emotional because it just, it, it's weird. It just, people say that, Lord, it's all okay, but this meant, it made me feel more stronger and determined that what I'm doing in my life, okay, and not to stress about what's going to happen in the future and that. So, yeah, it is really, really weird. Never had anything like this before, so I'm a bit like, away. But, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. It's lovely. I'm happy you had that experience. It's very profound, isn't it? Because you're... Yeah. As you said, it's so it's so real. The nervous system feels we have these yeah. imaginary, visionary experiences, but they're so real, and there's so much medicine in it. And you get to take that with you. Yeah, thank you. And you're welcome. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Anybody else? Vienna says her dog didn't like it, but she feels very calm. I think. <laughs> Animals are very sensitive to um, energies, of course, and, and frequencies, so it's understandable. Anybody else like to share their experience? Even if it, even if it wasn't what you thought it would be, just to share how it was. Um, if you don't like meditation, or if you're new to meditation, or... You don't generally enjoy it. Damien, did you participate? <laughs> You're busy with your son, maybe. Um, so yeah. Hi. Thank you so much. By the way, Rachel. Um, yeah, he was losing his mind for a minute there. Oh. But um, no, my anxiety was spiking because he was losing his mind and I have um my phone, my phone makes my anxiety spike all the time. Oh. But, you know, um, it was definitely calming. Um, I haven't sat through a meditation like that probably since I was in treatment, which was back in like 2012. So, yeah, it's been a while. It was very lovely. And I would definitely like to participate again. Yeah. So thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. Anybody else? Vienna says she really liked the vibrations. Lovely. Chuck, thank you. Yes. Well, thank you for that. That was an amazing experience. Um, I had a hard time maintaining focus, which I'm not surprised about. So as you were guiding, I don't know, I went a lot of different places. I'm unable to follow direction or hold thought that you were um that you were trying to th the instructions and directions that you were giving were difficult i was very distracted until you got to the point of talking about 
the beam coming down and, and focus. And I knew that there was something coming up. So I got excited, like, what am I going to see? And then all of a sudden it became very easy to focus. So mm, lovely, which, which is strange because I've actually recently wondered about attention deficit disorder and I've sought some, some help on, on that. And apparently I don't fit the mold. So maybe it's just who and how I am, which is very interesting. And, um, but when that was coming up, then I was able to just be right present in the moment and, and go with your instructions. And the beam took me to, I was very excited because I think a lot of what I'm doing right now, as far as motivation and manifestation is thinking about a year from now or in the future from now, of mm-hmm. what I'm doing now is going to produce what's coming later and what's that going to be the dream, you know, the big dream of, of why I'm putting in the time and energy. And I stepped out of the beam. It was like on Star Trek, right? I stepped out of the beam onto the grass of my lake home. I could see the water. I could see the house. That's everything that's on my vision board. Mm -hmm. Um, And I knocked on the door and I saw myself and the future me was very happy, smiling big, welcomed me, gave me a hug. Um, I looked very healthy. Until you said, what are you wearing? I didn't even pay attention to that. But as soon as you said that, it was for sure a tank top and shorts. So I was very <laughs> comfortable. And, right. and I, I, I love that whole atmosphere of being able to dress that way. Um, and then the very interesting thing you said was like, um, what did you ask yourself? And for some reason, when I was looking around, I didn't see anyone else. And I asked myself, are you still alone? Are you still not with anyone? That's what I asked myself. So deep down in there somewhere, I guess the question of partnership and, and whatnot is, is lingering for sure. That was my first question. So it's like, I'm, I'm sad for myself that I'm alone in the future. Mm. So you got it. The, when you asked that question, the answer came back to us, I assume. There wasn't an answer, but I knew the answer. Okay, you felt the answer, right? I didn't answer myself. I looked at myself and then I looked around the empty cabin and it was just me. Right, <clears throat> right. Yeah, thank you for sharing all of that. It's, it's, it's lovely. So to, to address what you were sharing about the, the mind wandering, um, the more you do a guided meditation, it will actually help that muscle to focus is like doing push-ups or sit-ups right repeat 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 so if your mind tends to do that just keep practicing um it still happens to me today and i've been meditating for years and i don't judge it it's like oh that's just the way my brain is right now right there's a lot yep. going on and it takes sometimes it's easier to focus than other times um one thing that i learned recently i started practicing was when a thought comes up, instead of using a mantra, like a lot of meditation teachers teach, instead of using a mantra um, to move the thought out of the way, because the mantra is really just another thought in a way. So I came up with one word that I use, and you can find your own word, because I think it's important, but use one word. um, And I was taught to use the word like a windshield on your mind. So every time your brain starts to wander or a thought comes up, you just use, it's a one syllable word and you just use the, say the word in your mind and you visualize a windshield wiper going across. And I'm finding that it's really helping just move that thought out of the way, right? Um, and then there's the other practice of watching, watching your thoughts go by, just observing them. But that can be tricky sometimes because we tend to follow the thoughts as they go by. So I'm sure you've, played with this it sounds like you've been meditating for a while so there's different ways to approach our mind we will never silence the mind unless we go and meditate in the Himalayas for 40 years which I don't think any of us are going to do um so you know really just accepting the mind that that's what the mind does we will never silence it or quiet it completely but what happens is it's the gaps between the thoughts that gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and something that you shared earlier Chuck I think in your first share was you know, this, having a successful meditation, like, let's just take that off the table. You know, if you're sitting and you feel better after just because you gave yourself the time to sit, as long as you feel better after in some way or fashion, you did great. Right. So let's not let the, the, the ego get caught up in 
doing it right or achieving something, right? Just sitting, just having a sitting practice is, is a huge gift to yourself without any expectation or demand onto the experience or what's happening. Just the fact that you're sitting and observing, well, my meditation was this today or my sitting practice was this today. The fact is, the most important thing is that you're doing it, right? So it takes a lot of pressure off ourselves, I think. And as I said, sometimes it's going to be busy and other times, oh my gosh, that was the best meditation ever. I had you know, hardly any thoughts because it feels good to go beyond the mind, right? To get beyond that space and place. And then with regards to your um, your your question that you asked of your future self about being single, what I hear you saying is that that's not your preference. So I would um, encourage you, I, I feel like there was, I feel like your higher self was giving you medicine, like in time, backtracking sort of and giving you medicine, like, hey, if you don't, you know, this is this is the trajectory we're on now because we live in this infinite field of pop probabilities, right? And so here's the infinite field, and you you saw this probability tonight, right? You traveled to the future self here, but there's a there's this future self and that future self and that, so you can choose a different direction, right? According to um, your higher powers will or guidance, let's say, if that feels in accordance or resonates for you, um, does that help? No, absolutely. And I'm in alignment and agreement with what you said about choosing the alternate. It's it's not a preference for me. I am just very cognizant of the fact that <laughs> if other people aren't injected into my life, like I'm really totally fine just being alone and myself and nature and my animals. And um, I know that if I truly am trying to be a healthy person that I have to allow relationships into my life and, and um, other than the people that I'm, I'm always caring for everyone, caring for everyone, caring for everyone. And mm -hmm. sometimes I leave that intimate part out. So mm -hmm. I was kind of questioning myself more like, a, hey, forget about that there, guy. Might want to pay some attention to that. You're still alone. Get right. on it. Right, right, right. How many, how many years have, or how long have you been sober? Sober, I'm only like mid-40 days. Okay, so it's pretty, and is this your first time or...? No, I've had several years before and relapses after several years. Okay, so would you say that's a I'm identifying a, a pattern in a, a relapse pattern for you? Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah, they're all patterns, right? Recovery patterns, relapse pattern, everything's a pattern. Um, so can having I awareness of that, of the trap is is what I didn't have was it's always the same pattern and then um the trap no intervention thought whatsoever are you aware of what triggers a relapse for you that's interesting i've actually gone through like the last eight months i've been sober for six months within the last eight months and i did some inner child stuff and and reconstructing reconstructing i like to self-sabotage and, and whatnot um and it's been different things it's been stress related it's been celebration it's been um, loneliness um, and most currently, which is the program that I'm building now is um, massive, massive codependency, specifically empty nesting. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and the, the common denominator is of the loneliness and the empty nest, that's loneliness, right? Correct. That's, yeah, so- That's codependency. Um, sorry? That's my codependency. Right, right. And balanced in there is just the, the love of being a father, right? Which is just a human experience to have an empty nesting experience, right? So there's there's layers to the cake, right? Um, can, I, can I offer you some into, can I ask you a question about um, something for Please you? Um, how is your relationship or was your relationship with your father? Um. It was a good relationship, I think. I mean, it wasn't super close. Um, everything, I think, got better as I started growing up and being more mature and an adult and, and left some of those adolescent resentments go about not having enough money and you didn't make us money and I was just ashamed of being poor. And then I had kids and went, oh yeah, you did what you could, I get it now. Um, but he was a gentle man to me. Um, there was many horror stories on from other siblings and um, um, step siblings and what he took over as 
another man's family and and tried to do what he could and they weren't you know but no hard feelings towards my mother or my father anymore so i wasn't ever a substance abuser because of resentment it's all based in fear stemming from childhood and, and you're aware of what that fear is from childhood yes abandonment abandonment so my question for you a deeper question for you to maybe journal on um would be to ask yourself um just sit in the question like don't let your mind answer it right now in this moment i just invite you to sit in this question of how, where did my father not show up for me or how did my where yeah it feels like where did my father not show up for me and just sit in that question within yourself okay how does that feel um i initially went to it's not my father it's my mother okay that's good you get closer yeah it was it's it was all my mom but then again, before she passed away, that was all gone. And I care gave to her until she gave her last breath. So there was no mm. anger, pain, anything left. But um, a fear doesn't go away. So I have the photo of my seven-year-old self on my altar next to my oils and crystals mm. and all that stuff. And um, I make a conscious effort to, to talk to that picture and let him know that everything's okay and he doesn't have to protect everyone anymore. And carry the weight of the world and all of that good stuff where all that fear came from where are we going to get our next meal are we going to have electricity deep dive okay. stuff it's been yeah it been is amazing it is. Yeah, few it is. months yeah it sounds like you've done some good deep work i would you know i'm i'm asking you these questions because of you know hope, hoping to get you out of this cycle um um there's i can see a gap we were sharing the abandonment. Uh, there's like a, there looks like there's a gap in your abandonment wound. Does that make sense? There's like a space that that's the shadow. It hasn't, it's like, I see this gap and there's this dark piece in the middle that hasn't been, hasn't been, un, hasn't been turned over yet. Hasn't been got at, hasn't been explored yet. Um, and it does seem to be connected to your mom. So maybe sit in that question as well. And, and I think I feel some, as I say that I can feel your system going like, no, I don't want to go in there. You know, you're kind of bouncing off going into that, as you said, that deep dive going into it, but, um, you know, just try that stream of consciousness writing. Do you like to write? I do. I've recently started using voice notes on my phone mm -hmm. i couldn't write fast enough to keep up with my thoughts and then i went back to read my notes actually and i've always done this decades of journaling i can't even read what i write right. um so then if i'm at the gym and i and wherever i am and i leave a voice note i can always listen to it and hear what i was saying and it's crystal clear and i'm able to just kind of go with flow you know that's good yeah mm -hmm. so I encourage you to flex that muscle with regards to your mom and maybe ask your seven-year-old self to speak. Give him permission, like give him space to, to speak. Does that make sense? Makes total sense. Yeah. So, yeah, try that. Thank you for bringing your energy here tonight. Very much appreciated. Thank you, Chuck. You too. Thank you. Anybody else before we wrap up? A few comments in there. Oh, thank you, Michael. And uh, yeah, Lisa Marie, carrying the weight of the world with so me as a child. Yeah, it's 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 um really important to do that inner child work and to speak to your inner child and let them know um yeah it's okay and like i feel you and it was it what like as chuck's sharing it was exhausting and scary so to say to your inner child i it was scary and you did go through so much i mean it's just like 
you know, if seven-year-old Chuck ran to me right now or seven-year-old Chuck ran to all of us and we were all together, what would, and he was crying, I mean, how would we treat him? What would we say? This is how I want you to treat your own inner child, the exact same way with unconditional love and like, tell me what happened and sit them down and give them a blanket and a teddy bear and a puppy dog and an ice cream or whatever it is, right? Like really, really, really take, take care of, you know, Damien sitting here, I see him on the screen, take care of our own inner child as much as we take care of our real children for those of us who are parents. Um, Ashley, I know that will resonate for you. So um, yeah, um, so I think, uh, Ashley, my heart. Um, I am so grateful for all of you for showing up this evening and for Damien for putting this together. I don't even know how we made this happen, but we did. <laughs> uh, thank you, Vienna. Um, and uh, Damien, would you like to, to like to say anything else? Oh, if anybody wants to find me, I'm on Instagram at recovery by Rachel. I'm at recovery by Rachel.com. I have a free guided meditation, like what you experienced tonight. I'm going to go and sign up there and uh, you can send me uh, an email over there or DM me on Instagram and tell me that you um, were on this meeting tonight. If you want to send me a personal message, I think on Michael, uh, I have to run Michael, but I think you can DM me on social media if that works for you. Uh, anything else, Damien?